so good morning to all present over here myself dr raghavend patidar convener institution innovation council global institute of technology welcomes you all audience present here you all aware that today institution innovation council global institute of technology jaipur in association with our mentor institute iic maharaja agarsen university himachal pradesh jointly organizing this session on achieving problem solution fit and product market fit if a solution solves a problem value is generated as a startup that's what you want all successful innovations are appropriate combinations of problems and solutions if they are right the problem and solution fit neatly hence the name problem solution fit by not taking so much time let's start this power seminar by introducing our expert speaker dr yajwendra pal verma dr yp verma received his btech degree in electrical engineering from nit hamirpur in 2000 and me degree in power system from punjab university he obtained his phd in electrical engineering from nit kurukshetra haryana he is presently working as the professor in the department of electrical and electronics engineering at uit punjab university chandigarh he has authored two books and more than 80 papers in various journals and conferences he has carried out seven funded research projects with dst mhrd and drdo he is the principal investigator of energy research group and design innovation center dic set up at uit for around 7.5 crore in dic he has filed three patents and one of them is already granted jointly with drdo that is dihar he has research association with birmingham city university and nottingham university uk presently he is executing one project jointly with the uk group on setting of solar pump based micro grid that is the setup for villages in punjab funded by the birmingham city university uk so he has served as many administrative responsibilities hod electrical and electronics engineering in charge startup cell ieee branch counselor of uit punjab university chandigarh he served as secretary and presently serving as vice chair of ieee chandigarh sub section his research interest includes renewable energy integration electricity market micro grid operation and power system optimization he is the member of ieee iste csi and inaz so over to you sir and welcome in this session akhil ji thank you very much uh, for the introduction and uh, i would like to thank uh, the global institute of technology and uh, uh, maharaja agarsen university uh, baddi for giving me this opportunity uh, for this session uh, as dr raghavendra has talked about that uh, i am leading one of uh, the research group uh, here on energy which is uh, being set up uh, with the help of mhrd Uh, design innovation center so uh, i have small experience of executing few of uh, the project and few of the products uh, that we are developing under this design innovation center and that said uh, right uh, you know on the beginning i would like to say that uh, it is very uh, you know heartening to see that now we are talking about uh, this research innovation design in present time uh, if you see the government policies Uh, government has initiated number of policies uh, which, which says uh, you know such as start up india stand up india atmanirbhar bharat uh, in fact uh, recently this is uh, you know vocal for local sort of uh, initiative has also been taken up by government of india just to promote the manufacturing sector which will not only make india atmanirbhar but it will also open lots of opportunities for the employment but the point is uh, that are we really ready to grab those uh, sort of initiative do we have the enough skill uh, power for that so the manpower that it is required which is the skill that is required it is very important that we create an ecosystem an environment from our nursery the nurseries are the institutions of higher education uh, particularly the colleges and universities like us uh, 
and that is the reason i think one such institution or such uh, 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 initiative under iic that has been granted to your institute uh, and uh, there are many other initiative to be taken like nature initiative for design innovation which under which we have this uh, design innovation center at uit punjab university chandigarh as well so lots of funding is being given lots of initiative is being uh, taken up by the government so that students are uh, you know given that kind of ecosystem where we talk about the design we we talk about the innovation we talk about entrepreneurship and as a result of that people are ready to take up uh, some entrepreneurship act activities and uh, we can boost our msme sectors if you see the major products uh, in, uh, at present you will find most of them are you know the brands of the foreign countries why we are not able to do that is because we have not learned uh, the skill of designing the product properly we believe in you know getting things done just like you know jugaad is the common word that we use but that can solve problem for the time being but it is not going to be a product which is can be fit for the market it's not a market ready product and that is the reason that it cannot be scaled up as well so uh, this is the reason that uh, government is thinking that the, the manpower the human resource that we have is mostly coming from the schools the colleges and the universities and let us uh, try to create these kind of uh, you know environment that kind of ecosystem so that people are confident once we think more about that engineering uh, 20 years you know before or 15 or even 10 even today also it simply means placement we never thought of setting up our own business and it is becoming a big challenge and we always hear that most of our uh, engineering graduates they are not employable or they are not employed very few numbers are employed so what about uh, the rest of the people so i think if we have this sort of initiative people will definitely come forward and uh, a time will come when we will have a very uh, you know vibrating manufacturing sector msme sector or some big brands will come in india and it is uh, going to give lots of opportunities to our young engineers uh, entrepreneurs and uh, we will be able to achieve the mission that our uh, government has set of atmanirbhar bharat india so on this uh, line let me uh, come to this topic now before that let me share my screen and i hope uh, uh, this is visible now yes sir visible okay thank you very much so uh, if you see this uh, topic it's a very you know uh, very wisely selected topic which is uh, says achieving problem solution fit and the product market fit these terms need to be understood very well when we say the problem solution fit that means we are uh, talking of a minimal viable product which uh basically says that it is uh, a need of the customer the discovery of the customer and we have to find out three you know answers uh, for the questions which say that is this uh, problem it is identified it is the real problem or are our customers going to take up you know, buy this uh, product or can this problem be solved if we have answer yes to these so that means that problem this is called as problem solution fit and the product market fit that means that are customers going to use or buy your product if the answer is yes then it means it is product market fit that means customers have validated that so uh, starting this when we talk about uh, the product development uh, it, uh, there are few terms which are very very uh, common one we call as the creativity and the innovation the creativity we say that some somebody is creative that means he has the capacity to look at a new way to any problem to any opportunities and one need to be creative if we have to come up with new design or maybe uh, a new solution to any problem and innovation is if you are able to apply those creative solution to the problems and opportunities which can definitely make some impact on the life of the people and help the society to grow now when we say the innovation there is another term which is linked with that that is invention so these two are completely different terms invention is developing a new thing altogether innovation is 
you know, simply creating a new, simple and cost effective solution to any problem. And we also think of okay, innovation can be done only if we carry out lots of studies, we carry out lots of research, then only innovation can be done. No, that is not the you know, case all the time. Yes, in certain cases, you may require lots of research, you may require lots of studies as well. But mostly you will find that in innovation is simply, you know, how do you look at the problem and how do you try to solve that problem? And I can give you these uh, three figures that you can see on the very top. It's a small pin. If you look at it, uh, it deeply and see what it is actually, it is simply a pin which is being used to hold the papers. The paper were being hold by other pins as well. And if you simply stretch it, it seems it is simply a wire. And the way we are molding it, it makes it a product. So do you think that there is some study, some research required in this? No. You somebody uh, thought of this problem, okay, there is a problem, we, have, we are not able to hold the papers. So how to do it? Simply mold it this way, it becomes a complete product and it is being sold in the market. Maybe it's cost, it's less, that's a separate issue. But the point is, nothing is required in that case. It's a simple observation and how do you try to apply the solution for that? The second figure that you see, it's uh, it calls a digital diary. Uh, now, th there is also a story behind that. You must have heard or maybe maybe you are not aware of uh, the name Sim Pitroda. He used to be the technical advisor to the government of India during Rajiv Gandhi government time in 1980s. And uh, he had lots of patents in his name. So one of the patents uh, that he had is on uh, a digital diary and he earned lots of money for that. So the question is that how do you, do you think that he has developed this? No, he is not well, it's just simply the idea that he has patented. And the story behind that was that he called somebody for the dinner and he forgot that. And uh, he had, you know, he felt very embarrassed when somebody came and there was no dinner ready for them. So he thought, you can't there be any device which, you know, gives me a sort of alarm. Uh, okay, there is uh, some uh, particular engagement that you have. So that's how this concept of uh, digital diary came. And... Uh, Ultimately, he earned, you know, uh, thousands of dollars for that. Now, he is still earning as a royalty because it is being used by most of the company, be it Samsung, Nokia, etc. So the question is, the point is, which I'm trying to make is that it is not essentially, it is essential that all the time you need to research, you need to have lots of equation solving, analytical solutions and all. No, it's simply the problem that you identified and then you thought of a solution, okay, can this be applied? You have a very good idea, patent it, and that's how things move. And people are running in lakhs out of these ideas. So what uh, I'm trying to tell you is that you need to think, uh, uh, look at the problems in and around you, and then maybe uh, come up with a very you know simple solution, very cost-effective solution, which is uh, acceptable to all. Yeah. Similarly, this Uber and Ola, people used to have lots of difficulty in uh, fetching taxis. You need to, if it is not possible to you know uh, go out every time to the main road so somebody must have thought okay why can't there be a you know platform a solution where taxi comes at your doorstep and that's how these platforms uh, they came up there are their solutions so innovation is not necessarily developing a complete product a hardware product only it can be any solution be a software be a hardware but it should solve the problem that we people are facing. Now, while uh, developing product, there is a design process and that process that uh, covers all these points. The first point that I would like to tell here is the ask which says that we need to carry out the need analysis. We need to identify the need. Sometimes when we start uh, executing our project in institutions like us, so what we do is that we try to build a solution and then we try to fit that solution to the problem in the market. That is not the way uh, the industry works. That is not the way that a new uh, start can come up. So first important aspect is that you need to carry out the need analysis and discuss, find out what are the constraints that uh, are there and then do research a bit. So research again, I, I told you it's not essentially that you need to carry out some simulation, some uh, uh, equation solving, etc. No, you simply find out the, what are the methods which are being used for that particular problem as of now, how people are coping up with that and uh, uh, find out what is the scope in that. 
and once you are clear about that then you need to find some solutions and there are many ways to achieve the solution of a particular problem so it all depends upon your creativity it all depends upon your work your uh, team work you know the ideas uh, exchange and then you can come up with some solution once you have identified a solution then you need to plan it that how do you execute that solution that planning is also very important then you create a prototype prototype after you create a prototype means you are developing say small solution it can be a hardware solution it can be your software solution but it is not a complete uh, product which is ready to launch in the market but it is going to work exactly what, like a real product but it is not having all the aspect that is required in a complete project uh, product so once you have, have created your uh, prototype then you need to test it because testing is very important whatever we develop it may perform as per our requirement you need to evaluate that if you doesn't uh, work as per uh, the expectation then you need to improve that design you need to redesign it and this is how this engineering design process work so today i will be taking you to a journey of developing the proof of concept and that is uh, required uh, or important for the institutions uh, like us uh, of engineering institutions or be at other institutions or universities where we are uh, having lots of uh, tinkering lab incubation labs nowadays and we are developing lots of products so how do you come up uh, uh, from the idea generation to this proof of concept and finally your prototype and the product which is market fit so these are the steps that you need to follow so i will be discussing and i will be discussing them in detail later on the first is your needs identification so i told you it is very very important that you need to identify the target audience or of your customers so need identifications are uh, very very important before you start any work if you really want to make it as a, as a successful startup or you want that product to be accepted by the market it's not something that you develop something and you fit to the market that is not going to work it's very very rare the second important aspect in this case is the product attributes and specifications you always uh, uh, come up with a specification if i design a machine if i design a small chair also so i know that this is what should be the uh, rating of that motor it should be the if i am talking about a chair what should be the height what should be its weight uh, how should be the back and everything so attributes and specifications are, need to be very very clear before you start uh, developing your product similarly there are many designs so you need to uh, evaluate all those and then finalize one design methods again there are many design methods that will we uh, have that are available which are uh, the most suitable that is you need to decide materials selection is also an important aspect how do you select that so that what is the criteria then what are the tools for the design so that also need to be seen then design of assembly manufacturing and for maintenance because whatever we design it should be easily assemblable it should be easy to manufacture maintenance is also very very important then where are you going to manufacture it testing performance testing is next one because unless you test it your product is not going to be accepted so similarly here also uh, uh, we need to take care of the standards the codes and laws etc similarly that doc we need to document the complete process that we follow and the drawings of those product Uh, need to be taken the first step now let us talk about uh, the very first step that i told this uh, needs identification it is very important that you should have a clear idea that who are your potential customers and what is the way to uh, identify that there are hundred of things that may bother you and you always say hey, this this is uh, a really a big big problem i need to change it so what what is the criteria so i think uh, there is there is one uh, very good suggestion given by one of the professors uh, uh, i heard his lecture and he said that in in institutions like us what we do is the students pg students pg students who so you are teaching they are full of ideas they see the problem in around you so the best way is whenever you start something or uh, uh, maybe allocating any project you ask your students you tell or note down at least two or three of the problems that bother you most in and around you and this is how you can go down and if you have 50 students in your class so almost 150 200 problems will be ready with you and out of them if you uh, 
they sort sort them out so maybe 100 problems will come up and out of 100 problems then you need to identify are who are the you know you can list out make a list complete list whose problems are these is it your problem is your friend's problem your relative whether it is linked to you or you are not uh, linked to the people who uh, uh, who are there what is it is is it a particular kind of society it is is gender specific or it is for a particular age like it's a problem of the child or uh, old age people likewise you can classify them or it may also be related to a you know particular occupation it or maybe it's related to some health issue or it is a problem of a particular location like, like it is a problem of a hilly area it can be a problem of a, a area like uh, Rajasthan where we have lots of sands or uh, uh, in other areas it can be a problem which can be for the rich or middle and poor class people or the physical disability so what i have tried to tell you here is that first of all what you need to do is that you list out the problems that you are facing so once you face uh, uh, we are clear about these problems after that you need to sort out those you know who is going to be used so from there you will be very clear because this is the target customer these are the potential customers they are going to use it so it will be making this thing very clear to you the second uh, another point important point is that you need to see the other's perspective as well sometimes when we start finding solutions so we find okay whatever we are thinking is good that is the best but that is not the case you need to put yourself in other's shoes see uh, the problem from others perspective that is going to help you a lot when it comes to innovation similarly you also need to take care of the constraints for the solutions the constraints mostly that institution like us is going to face is in terms of the money who is going to finance it how much time it will take to uh, come up with the solution what are the facilities required to build the solution then rest of the problems i, I think are for the startups and for business uh, models where we look for the supply chain and servicing support so it all depends upon uh, at uh, what are you eyeing at if you're looking for a big business to start up so i think these things are to be considered so what i'm uh, what i'm talking uh, today is uh, for a complete uh, uh, setup or maybe a complete business so few of them are definitely going to be helpful for the students uh, or the institution like us so they can follow these processes and uh, it's not essentially that each and everything is applicable to you as of now the second important point is your product attributes and specifications. Now, uh, whenever if you can see the picture on the right, that even if you go to, to purchase a mobile, so what we look for, we look for the specification, we look for the features, the attributes that it is offering. So you will always go for a mobile, which is having very good camera, megapixel we talk about. It has a good battery backup. It should have a touch sensor. It should have, what's the processor? Like we go for the Apple most of the time because it's, it's having good processor so we are talking about the mobile any product that you design you should think what are the attributes because they are going to be your usps and people are going to uh, purchase it on the basis of that so you also need to again identify that what is the target audience if it is for a rich class so obviously they won't mind paying money for the features but if you are going to target the lower and middle class obviously they are going to uh, maybe Compromise with some features, but look for the cost effectiveness. So I think these are the things that you should keep in mind before you start developing a product. What are the technical specifications? We should be knowing very clear. The size, uh, what what will be the weight? What is the power requirement for that? Now, the cost constraints. So I talked about these. Uh, that, uh, these are the things that you should have in your mind. Then another important factor is the human factor. Who is going to be a purchaser? I told you. Then who is going to be the users? Do we have a sufficient people, um, uh, person who can service them? So these are the things also to be considered for setting up a business or setting up a startup. Now, presently, whenever you uh, come up with a startup or your own industry, so environment is going to be a big issue nowadays. And you need to have the clearances in, in case your products uh, are going to uh, cause some environment or maybe uh, some uh, output. Uh, in terms of the waste so that need to be considered about whether this output is going to have any impact on the environment during production it can be during use it can be during you know maybe disposal for example today we are using photovoltaic cell photovoltaic panels but what about the disposal of those the batteries we are using 
so i think these are the policies that uh, will be coming up and we need to be ready for that third important point comes comes is uh, the alternative designs and their evaluation i told you there can be number of designs so uh, we need to develop the design concepts there are there can be many design concepts so we need to see whether uh, how simple or complex they are so you can decide on the basis of its complexity or the practicality the cost etc similarly there are certain uh, thing that we are trying to achieve which should not violate the law of physics sometimes we try to develop something and uh, it, it is violating the law it is not going to be you know sustainable then we develop the sketches on the paper uh, the electronic sketches now there are lots of software so that we are very clear we can have a 3d view so there are no number of design softwares available uh, these days like your auto desk then your uh, solid works we have autocad solid uh, and etc adobe so these sketches can be made so that you have a clear idea you have a clear uh, visualization of your product then you can compare them on the basis uh, of the design so you need to see whether this is really required or this is uh, not uh, desirable so many time we have a uh, number of features for example in many vehicles we see uh, that we are having uh, uh, you know cruise uh, drives so the in that case you need not to uh, accelerate your motor it start automatically so many in the condition road condition like india it is very difficult that we use the, the, the cruise control but it is going to add the cost of near about uh, one or two lakhs so we need to see that what type of customer we are targeting that is why you will see in uh, uh, you know automobiles also there are different models because these companies know that some there are some people they are not going to add uh, use it because uh, if there is a cruise control it is going to add one lakh to that somebody may not be interested why should i waste unnecessarily for for this particular one two features only uh, uh, and additional one 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 lakh rupees i can save that so this is how you need to compare your the, the designs and the, the based on the target customers and then decide whether they are desirable or they are not desirable and then you can apply these comparison methods these are the very important methods dominic uh, pahal and bits methods and coos methods these methods like if we talk about is methods they give you an idea the idea like uh, this domain method gives you an idea about the optimization how do you optimize your design pahal and bits method it is a predictive model uh, so on the basis of that you can find out whether this design is going to be uh, economical it is going to be efficient or not then your coos method which is quantitative technique uh, to rank the multi dimensional options if there are number of options available so how do you uh, sort them out so it makes a matrix and on the basis of that you can rank or this is the best method that we need to apply similarly uh, this house of quality here also we have a planning matrix it basically links the customer need with the method so accordingly uh, the designs can be sorted out so you identify the best design and uh, then identify that which you are going to realize in actual so these are some of the thing that you can work out before you start building a product then what are the design methods there are again different design methods we are having engineering drawings so any product that we develop particularly i have been talking about the hardware you can uh, have n number of softwares these days i talked about whether it's your solid works whether it's your autocad your autodesk Uh, your solid edge etc adobe etc so they are going to give you the engineering drawing and uh, there are softwares coming up you just need to give like a uh, specification it will give you this sort of drawing as well then the other important point in this case is while designing is the ergonomics ergonomics is uh, the way it interacts in, with the you know human the product and human interaction is very important and in this case uh, for example you know we need to design so that how it is going to interact with the human body for example i have got you can give an example of a chair now the chair should be in such a uh, design that it helps you uh, to support your spine so that is what we mean by the ergonomics so it the design should be in such a way that it is not going to cause any problem as far as your back is concerned your spine is concerned so how it, that is uh, interaction is taking place so you need to take care of that in the design as well it should not be uncomfortable uncomfortable to the human or the operator then aesthetics 
this part is uh, completely missing in uh, most of our product that is what i told you in the very beginning that we talk about jugar in particular and that thing is the outlook whenever we go to the market we always see okay, this is uh, we always go with outer beauty first okay, this is the best product it looks nice we pick up that so not only there are features the functional capability but also its look is also very important and the finishing should be very very good the aesthetics have to be taken care of so design should be taking care of the aesthetic aspect as well similarly the components and the parts are they uh, available because sometimes the bought out components are there you are not going to design them uh, so if they are available somewhere are they ready to be used as it is or you need to modify them and then use it so these things also need to be considered we have a product and we need the spare parts if they are not easily available then also it is not going to be accepted by the people a lot because they may this difficulty in repairing them similarly when you develop uh, any any product any part so what is the material needed so you also you also need to take care while designing because design can change with the material as well then another important point is the materials and the process selections so materials are very very important and materials keeps on changing so new materials and processing they are being developed all the time i can give you an example of the batteries and photovoltaic panels so batteries uh earlier there is used to be you know old batteries like red acid batteries but if we talk about presently the, uh, the lithium ion batteries are being used mostly and not only lithium ion lithium tungsten and there are many more combinations coming up because we want to enhance the energy density of uh, the capacity of your batteries so you should be ready to take up that if we cannot uh, simply come up with a product which is going to use the old batteries which is not having that capability we always uh, take up a mobile which is having higher uh, battery backup so it is possible because they are using advanced material for that so uh, so that they have high battery backup so we need to take uh, take care of that also so it all depends upon what kind of product you are developing so what the point that i am trying to make here is that you should take care of the new materials or efficient material which are required for your product similarly for the photovoltaic panel there was a time where we were using mono crystal now we use the poly, you know poly crystals now we are polymer based photovoltaic panel new panels are coming up we are which are having very good efficiency as well so we should be developing those panels if somebody is developing a photovoltaic panel and still using mono crystal which is having efficiency of 15% so it is not going to be accepted by the market in the uh, uh, time to come so that should also be clear in your mind okay how we are going to uh, use the new material and how your design is going to modify as per that so in design we again we need to consider whether they are desired or they are not desired sometimes we put up anything unnecessarily that is going to add cost with that may not add to uh, any efficiency or the feature but uh, uh, you know it is going to add to the cost so we need to consider all these parts as well then how do you select your material so we have to see the product requirement then there is a materials information database that is cambridge materials selector there are 100 lakhs of materials bases are available their properties are specified and you can select the material for your product from that database so it gives you a very very clear idea from there and once you have that then you can finalize the material selection okay. and uh, you can come up with your proof of concept the material for your proof of concept the next important point that comes is the design tools so the tools that we use they should also be able to take care of this failures you know we need to identify the ways in which designs they can malfunction and uh, particularly uh, whether they are being uh, you know failed because of any mis happening or it is due, uh, failing due, during their regular use so that also need to be considered then uh, you know we need to set the values of the severity the occurrence of uh, frequent it is occurring how do you detect that you know so the criticality of that the risk priority number can be allocated to that so we need to modify our design so i would like to give you one example we worked on one such product with uh, an industry in badhi which were uh, designing these uh, jars for the mixies and uh, what was happening that uh, the, the, these jars were uh, experiencing some sort of cracks after few few uh, uses so they were not able to detect it what what is the reason so what they asked for okay can you come up with this you know some sort of analysis on the basis of that some test 
if this is the uh, problem or this is uh, the result of that test it can be put under the category of uh, risk or it is uh, going to be cleared so we need to assess that failures sometime if you are going to throw it some maybe it falls down it may crack that's a separate issue but if you are using it normally and there, there are some cracks being felt some failures are occurring so you should be able to uh, have that testing facility as well so these design tools should take care of all these things similarly this poka yoke is a japanese term which makes your you know mistake proofing of the design it cannot be any mistake in the design so the, uh, we always talk about the technology of the japan the people make the perfect uh, design uh, of the electronics item particularly so because they follow a particular process so this is one poka yoke that is what we call uh then similarly this trace is again uh, the same term but it's a you know a russian acronym a russian equivalence that is being used so here it is a theory of uh, inventive problem solving so we uh, also think of uh, how the, these problems can be solved so there are different ways to improve the design so design tool should take care of that and i think if you want to make your product really successful in the market so these are the things that need to be considered yes in college level you may not uh, uh, do all these things but at least keep these things in mind ki, okay if there is a product that you are developing that may have certain failure that may not work properly it may have some malfunction so you should be able to detect that and accordingly modify your design then we also need to design uh, the assemblies you know the manufacturer so they can be the, uh, the model so whenever you uh, pick up a small toy for example a plastic toy in your home and uh, you assemble it and you disassemble it so there is sequence so you open first and then your second part and third part and fourth part there is some literature also being documentation is also supplied and that's how you uh, build it so assembly what is the sequence what are the tools needed for assemble and disassemble it you need to simplify it it should not be too complex anything that you like to fix up it if it is too complex i think nobody is going to accept in the market because the people who are uh, servicing it they want a very simple assembly and disassembly it should be uh, sufficiently stout so that it is going to take care of the vibrations or any other sort of external mechanical injuries but at the same time the assembly should be very very simple to do similarly the it should be uh, designed in such a way that it is easy to manufacture also the processes and the facilities which are needed to manufacture so the design should be in such a way that we have these facilities very easily and then if there is a change required we can that simplify the manufacturing so we need to make those changes so that manufacturing becomes easier maintenance uh, each device that we uh, use or that we produce that is definitely going to have some sort of uh, problem so if it if it is there so how do you troubleshoot that so we should be able to identify that uh, how you know uh, it can be affected with what uh, is that wear and tear that is taking place during a normal use so we should be able to assemble disassemble it or if it is there so we should be able to replace that if so, for example if i simply want to replace a particular uh, part of that uh, device or particular component of device i should be able to do it very easily it should not take too much time it should not be too complex to change that so this is the how you need to modify your design then uh, the next is your uh, manufacturing and assembly so each part that you uh, manufacture you should be knowing what is the machine required for that the some material uh, the parameters that you need to fix up the quality check is very very important who is going to make it are you developing it yourself are you going to outsource it to some industry somewhere are there people who are skilled enough to do that and we have faced lots of problem in that uh, simply as an education institutions what happens if you want to develop a product uh, so small part in the industry is not going to ready uh, they are not going to develop it for you if they want because somebody uh, developing uh, a particular product like uh, we try to develop one wind mill so when it comes to developing the wings so it needs uh, uh, a mold and they say okay we cannot do it for one or two uh, uh, you know pieces it need to be a bulk bulk in order so we face the difficulties so thankfully we are having these 3d printing machines nowadays so with the help of that it is very easy for us at least to come up as a prototype not exactly as a complete uh, finished product so that that is that is make things slightly easier so what you should keep in mind who is going to manufacture it 
uh, do we have the people to take up that manufacturing? How much time uh, needs? Sometimes things are not in control. Like uh, these days, we have been uh, observing there is semiconductor chip shortage. So nothing can be done. Your product, your cars, deliveries. Uh, getting hampered because of that so we need to think of that aspect as well then your all parts it should be as per your bill of materials uh, that that bill of material the centralized source of information where we have assembly procedures that the tool being used the right procedure that is there and the safety the product that we develop any each part that we have in your product it should not be sharp it should not harm the people and the operator or the assembler over there so these are the things that we need to consider then after we have uh, developed it, it is very important that we need to test it. Testing is very important. I think if the people uh, uh, are from engineering background, so they can understand it well. We uh, teach like electrical machine. In electrical machines, like we test any device, be it a transformer, be it your, any machine. So what do we test? We try to test okay, how it is going to work. It is performance evaluation basically. So it is going to give you an idea of how much the losses are taking place, how it is going to work under certain conditions. So those test, tests need to be uh, designed for your product. Okay, on the, this particular test, this is, this is uh, the thing that I'm going to get. So you follow the test plan as per the specifications. You should be able to repeat it. The safety checks are also, so the test for the safety tech check also. Then on the basis of that, you need to quantify the performance whether it's pass or it's fail. Decide that whether it's okay or it's not okay. So in that, when it comes to the testing, it is on the lab scale, then it also need to be tested at the user end. Like you have to give it your product to the users, potential customers, which are not known to you because it is very important. If they are known to you, they will not give you proper feedback. So let them operate it, give them the honest feedback. And on the basis of that, you can modify your design. So they are very essentials uh, uh, in terms for the safety and those suggestions need to be considered for modifying the design. Then we also need to take care of the laws, regulations, the codes, like uh, international and national codes are available. I can give an example, your uh, device, maybe your fan, your uh, uh, iron or anything that you design, there is a code, it's standard, like we know how much is the voltage level? Mm -hmm. It is designed for 30 volt, but it should also be able to work, uh, you know, beyond that voltage. So mm -hmm. there is a standard being used, there's a code being used. Uh, so that we need to consider. Similarly, for mm -hmm. a particular batteries, how much is the voltage required there? So the standards are there. Only then it is going to be accepted by the uh, uh, customers. Mm -hmm. So these uh, certifications are also required. An electrical uh, product that we have, it should be certified by Bureau of Energy, uh, Electrical Energy Efficiency, that is BE. Similarly, there are some ISI mark. We always say that it should be ISI mark. So only then your product is considered to be accepted or passed all uh, necessary requirements. So these certifications also need to be uh, taken. So from where you're going to get it, you should also be knowing that okay, if I have developed a product, this sort of certification is required and uh, then you should be at least meeting that minimum standard so that you get that certification. Then the product liability also need to be considered. So all these things are very, very important. You need to always uh, keep record of them. Maybe you do not uh, do it immediately, but yes, uh, if you really want your market, uh, this product to be launched. Uh, to the customers in the market, then it is required for sure. And the last point is your documentation and drawing. Documentations are very, very important uh, part because uh, uh, you know your product can be used for years and uh, in future use, you will definitely have some repairs, spare manufacturer. So I can give you my personal example that uh, I had one refrigerator and uh, it's uh, uh, one, uh, uh, relay was to be replaced and that relay uh, is not no longer available. Nobody is manufacturing it. So uh, we also need to see these things that, that that complete product becomes a waste. So it should not be the case that there are no uh, that, uh, spare parts available, no repair can be done. So these are the things you should need to consider in mind. 
सो दैट योर पीपल दे आर एटलीस्ट एश्योर्ड क्योंकि इफ देर इज सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम वी आर गोइंग टू गेट द स्पेयर पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू गेट इट रिपेयर वेरी इजिली सो अगेन यू नीड टू क्वानिफाई द परफॉर्मेंस एंड डिसाइड वेदर इट्स ओके और इट्स नॉट ओके Similarly, you document everything. Someone, uh, you know, the, the people who is new to your organization, he should also be able to remake an end product. And particularly, this is the difficulty that we have faced in our institution. And I think you must also uh, be facing, or you must have seen it yourself. Like whenever we start any product, or we start any uh, maybe a small initiative for designing. So there are very good students that we get initially. They design it. They design as per their own uh, strength, own uh, capability, and uh, then they, you know, uh, somehow uh, com complete it. They do not document it, and they get pass out. Once they pass out, that product we try to you know push it to the junior classes, and other people may have that capability, or they may not have that strength of the software and hardware. and as a result of that that complete effort that goes to waste but if you document it well each and every step so i think the next person who is going to take up that from here onward that is going to uh, be very very beneficial very very useful for them so documentation is very very important for the institution like us so we have lost and wasted lots of money in many of the product which could have been very good products but because students have left and nobody is, uh, is ready to take up and uh, match up their level or have that uh, that sort of uh, idea in the junior batches so uh, we you know can't do anything for that so that is why documentation is very important and you need to document each and every uh, point each and every stage uh, of your design similarly your design it keeps on evolving then there are many platform that is not available that may modify uh, so you need to think of uh, that aspect as well so whatever is a new technology new software coming up you try to make use of that so that it is uh, you know easier for the people to design similarly you need to have these uh, the reports milestone and the uh, you know complete proposals and the detailed design so all these things are very very important and uh, uh, that is how you can make your uh, you know complete design process uh, uh, which is going to be not only Yeah, uh, you know, it can complete in uh, in it itself, but also it can also be passed on to your next batches as well. So I'd like to give you some examples. Uh, the simple products, uh, you know, I I told you in the very beginning that you thought of uh, many of the solutions, but those solutions are uh, whether they are ready going to be applied to the uh, society or not. so the best idea is that you go out see the problems and then you uh, come up with the problems and then try to find the uh, solutions these are some of the problems which have been uh, uh, you know identified by some of the students and they uh, may or may not be uh, uh, a, a very very good potential for a business but they can def definitely help or uh, make uh, the life of the people who are linked with them a bit easier like it can be your uh, you know and the seed planter then your uh, compact study table then uh, your you no know, fruit picker bicycle operated washing machine then your uh, you know walker with sitting ceiling fan for cleaner we we have this is a big challenge i i also faced it that there is no cleaner for the ceiling fan you know we need to put up uh, get up on uh, the tables and the stools and then reach there and it was very difficult to uh, clean it the blackboard cleaner we don't have that you know the window pane if in your household if you so those who are uh, living on uh, high story buildings so it's very difficult to uh, clean your window pane from outside so how do you do that the wire scraper garbage picker so there are many many uh, such uh, products which can be designed or at least they can be taken up for, as a challenge uh, by the students of engineering institutions then who can innovate there are students ug students because the young students have very good ideas the people like us we have a particular way of thinking we cannot sometimes think beyond our uh, uh, you know normal vision that we have developed till now so the young students have uh, lots of ideas so these are people who can innovate definitely pg students faculty it's not saying that we cannot innovate yes and everyone each and every one 
of us can innovate you know so so on the only thing that that is needed is that you need to have an open mindset you need to be ready to take uh, you know take up the ideas you know, and see that who are the people who are going to be the users you know, and how can uh, we, we really help them how, how can we benefit uh, them by some of the solutions that we are going to propose so young people are more i would say uh, uh, they, they are more likely to innovate because they have a new way of uh, looking at the things similarly what are the facilities and designs uh, for design innovation that facilities required in facilities obviously we require a space most of them we are talking about uh, the incubation labs these days uh, so in uh, institutions if there are incubation facilities or some tinkering labs available so you can sit over there have discussion maybe talk about a design can design other softwares and systems should be available there then once you design then do you have the sufficient material so that material stock in a tinkering lab is available then the support from a skilled person many products that you are developing for particularly if you talk about an assembly so we do we have the 3d printing or the uh, maybe the workshop facilities so this support uh, of skilled people is also important then i told you that the innovation space the the uh, your tinkering labs are they available then your tools then some sort of electronics the pcb is a very small component or today we are talking about uh, lots of these uh, microcontrollers which are being used uh, then the space for work and uh, storage of product uh, in progress so these are a small small challenges that we also have observed we have developed certain products we do not have the sufficient space for the storage where to keep them so the tools are also available some of the tools may not be available that you need to procure it so i think that this is these are the thing that an institution has to supply to the faculty and the students similarly the faculty advice is very very important we have experienced people they know many things so i think that is what is needed then the funds there are funds for startup there are funds for some projects uh, you can also compete in various competitions get the funds for that and uh, you have you should have an easy purchase process and uh, facility for the fabrications similarly uh, there is the server based design in the arch uh, you know uh, archiving so these are the things also needed uh, then your software uh, workstation availability and this uh, software is very very important component of each and every design nowadays so these workstations should be available everywhere so that you have fast uh, calculation fast simulation uh, rather than uh, you know the old system which take lots of time for solving or uh, simulation purpose if you talk about uh, uh, the students perspective then uh, uh, i will i will request you that you should view uh, from other people life so always i say that put yourself in other shoes and then see then you will be able to analyze that problem very well then what are the consequences of your design what is its social impact or economical impact so these are also need to be considered when we come from you know theory to practical it is really very different so you must have heard many people who are in industry they say okay no it's very completely different uh, game altogether so yes it's different so you need to be uh, thinking in that direction as well so then it takes time so i have also observed students wish to get this work done in maybe you know overnight weeks time two months time no it needs lots of patience and perseverance so perseverance is this word i think this is very very important and i emphasize upon this many a time to my students that uh, even if you talk about addison who conducted more than 500 tests before he invented that bulb so that means he despite failing 500 times he was of the opinion he was having that uh, uh, belief in himself because okay, he can come up with some solution so that perseverance is very important you should keep working you should keep putting efforts never say a die attitude the team work a single people you know person can not achieve a solution so i think you should have a very good team but you need to divide your work properly you, everyone should contribute so team is very very important for a successful project then you need to learn beyond courses there are many sources available these days you can 
uh, join you know online courses open courses learn beyond your courses that is going to help you in learning many other things be it your uh, software design or any other uh, uh, you know subjects that you wish to take up then there will be many failures so i already told you never to say it i not give up and there is always a better way so whatever you are proposing we cannot say that there is not a better way there is always a alternative solution alternative solution and better solution than what you have proposed nobody can say ki whatever i have designed this is the best solution nothing can be better than this so that is not a possibility so this should always be kept in mind so somebody will say okay no, no what are you doing in this this is not going to happen in any way uh, this this is the best way so keep it in mind that there is always a better way so the only thing is that whether you are able to do that or not that's up to you your capability but i will always say this is always a better way then from teachers and uh, uh, the facilitators teachers need to update it and it's a fact that like uh, when we studied we talked about microprocessors a microcontroller you know a bit but if you talk about these days i do not know they have revolutionized uh, the electronic circuitry so we need to update are we ready to take up that the new topics the topic that we studied and the topics which are now we need to think of that we should be ready for that so you know always adopt practical approach we need to give the handout sports to the students then we should also be telling them the safety of the tools and equipments then management system uh, for uh, the facilities you should be available round the clock to your students you know and you should be ready to give the support beyond your sports and expertise so this is what is needed a support uh, from the teachers side so that is going to help our students to grow and take up uh, these sort of uh, initiatives then once you uh, uh, come up with the proof of concept stage the next important part part is commercialization i think here we lack uh, because most of the time the uh, the publicity how do you advertise that it becomes a very very big challenge so you need to have those strategies who is going to manufacture it who is going to publicize the market it be it on social media how you going to sell it and all these things the marketing is very very important and who is going to the own it who is going to supply the funding so i think these are the things the questions that you need to ask and these days i uh, if you have must, uh, you have observed the shark tank india program uh, there are lots of people uh, the angel investors are available uh, many people with very good idea very good product they are coming up they are showing their uh, product and getting funding as well so these are the things that you should be really uh, thinking and targeting as well another important point that comes into the mind beyond this uh, proof of concept stage sometime the product that you design it should also uh, be patented so the design registration or patent who is going to help you in that in because the documentation the writing the patent is also an art so do you have that uh, uh, facilities over there who is going to help you in that you should also uh, consider this aspect it's very very important otherwise your idea can be you know uh, steal by anybody and uh, then prototype development here you need to think of the financial support i already talked about that then your like real products that could be marketed the testing you know then uh, testing to failures then your manufacturing strategies who going to manufacture it then the costing is very very important you know then market survey also need to be conducted this is very important only then it is to, uh, going to be accepted or it is going to be scaled up then who are the possible manufacturers for that who is going to market fit for you so i would like to take you to some of the pro uh, prototypes that we have developed uh, here uh, in design innovation center at uit punjab university chandigarh so this is one uh, product that we have already given to uh, the few firms it's a document sanitization box so again uh, this product was uh, designed uh, keeping in mind the covid situation we were having lots of uh, sanitization uh, devices pet or uh, touch free sanitizers where we are going to get uh, the uh, sanitizer then uh, there are uh, uv based sanitization box coming up which is going to give the uv radiation then they are going to kill the bacteria but there 
are confined to the uh, surface only but it was a neat felt okay uh, there can be files in the offices and those papers can also have uh, uh, this covid bacteria so how to you know get rid of that so there are many papers and who says that if you keep a, a, any of your paper uh, at a temperature of uh, more than 92 degree for at least 5 to 7 minutes then the, that is going to be completely sanitized so this was the uh, uh, basically the specifications we can say so we try to develop a solution for that so we developed one box that box which should uh, be operated at a temperature of 95 degree at least and it should be operated at least for 15 to 20 minutes so here again we started with this okay this who is going to use it obviously office is going to use it so target audience is first first part then what's the specification specifications were clear because okay, this is the temperature required for this much time then the control aspect we talked about another important point was uh, that what's the material selection so since it should be able to meet up the temperature 95 degree so we picked up this mfd medium density fiber which was able to take care of that then the size depending upon the requirement of your files then who is going to uh, make this uh, heating what uh, what sort of heating how much is the heating and how is going to circulate it uh, within your chamber so all these things have to be designed they should be very clear in your mind and then you come up with this and then control us controller so we use arduino over here for the controlling purpose so this is a small product that we develop where we have the temperature control box we have a complete uh, mfd based sanitizing box then we have a heating chamber this uh, if you see this picture on the right so here we are using it for uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, 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 same material which is being used for your air air conditioning purpose as well because it is not going to uh, result in any sort of heat loss in this case another product that we have developed here in our lab which is uh, being tested nowadays is your vertical axis wind turbine normally we have a huge wind mills which operates very uh, high speed but uh, low wind mill speeds are uh, very rare and uh, it was again a project of uh, drdo they dr dr means uh, defense institute of high altitude and research they were of the opinion that uh, people or the soldiers who are moving uh, in the hill if there is no sun available so can we have a small windmill which is easily assemblable like uh, this we can easily assemble a disassemble and put it at and uh, there is small wind flow in most of the time and uh, then it can help in charging the batteries so that is how this concept of uh, you know uh, we can say hybrid vertical axis windmill came up and it can operate a very low speed wind speed of 4 to 5 meter per second so that's how the design started and our mechanical students have designed it and we have fabricated it on on the 3d printer here again the the challenge that i was discussing to to you is that uh, for designing these wings boards are required nobody is is ready to take up and uh, you know design it for you or maybe fabricate manufacture it for you basically design we have done but my fabrication and manufacturing was not Uh, being done by any industry they say okay for one or two pieces we are not going to do it because we are going to make a board it adds the cost so it was a challenge but thankfully we had a 3d printer and for the 3d printer we were able to do it that's all another uh, important product uh, 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 that we had is the piezoelectric shoes uh, so this is a patented product that we have so the idea was very clear that uh, normally in low sub zero temperature battery discharges very fast so can we have any solution uh, where uh, we can give a signal uh, if somebody is trapped in the snow uh, in those conditions so that rescue party can easily track them so we developed it using piezo materials piezo materials which can work under sub zero temperature and you don't require too much of your energy it is going to give a small energy uh, which is uh, giving a radio frequency signal and that signal can be traced in a area of proximity of around 200 meters and if rescue party is in around that and they are able to see uh, uh, this signal so they immediately will know okay there is uh, some person who is trapped in the nearby so this is a product which is going to be uh, launched by the drdo for their own uh, army persons 
then we dwell on iot based uh, this smart pitch this smart pitch is already we have uh, given to the industry uh, this uh, technology transfer has taken place this is the initial drawing over here so in that case uh, you must have seen that there are no wifi based control no we also try to design the switch the switch which should be very similar to the switch that we have in our home it doesn't require smart devices it simply have this smart switch and we can operate it manually you can operate it with her with the help of your uh, wi-fi as well so uh, no wiring changes required simply you put up this switch and this is going to work perfectly for you so this product is also there uh, we are developed in our design innovation lab uh, this is uh, another product that we had it is to analyze the behavior of the mouse so we called it rodent operating bucket so it was again operated through arduino uno and uh, here uh, we were trying to give the controlled output out of these using syringe so we were uh, the mouse will come at different points and uh, on the basis of that they are going to get some sort of uh, liquid out of that and the behavior of that mouse is going to be analyzed so that is uh, the work that is being done by the bio people but the point is that they simply asked us to this is what is our requirement so they give us the complete requirement what is uh, needed and accordingly we designed it for them so this is again uh, a product which is going to be uh, uh, you know given to many many of the labs uh, in the india then we do have one uh, solar power rickshaw rickshaw so again this rickshaw uh, you know we have used a hybrid rickshaw where we have manual as well as your battery operated system so in this case uh, we used uh, the batteries we have given uh, 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 sort of uh, the motors operation in this the solar panels are also being used to charge we have given the facilities of led we have given the facility of just a dc fan we have given the facility for the charging purpose the so small facility which are can be given so this design is there so uh, there is one company which have come up come forward to design it for us so they need lots of modification but yes these are some of the work that our students have done in our lab then this cnc mini lab this is again uh, we have already given to the industry and uh, uh, now five axis cnc machine is also being developed at our university so uh, the development process step if you like to summarize is the first of all you need to have this idea so the idea generation is very very important so you may have a lot number of idea i told you how to get it you just need to list down the problem that you face and then sort them out and then you screen your idea you see whether it's feasible or it's not feasible it's viable or it's not viable and on the basis of that you come up with a uh, particular idea and then you think of the you know these uh, concepts how to go or build that then the market strategies the business analysis you need to carry out then the product development you know the product development i already have talked about that how you need to develop it like selection of the specifications the material required the design tools the design methods so everything once you do that then you the test the marketing whether it is going to be accepted by the market or not and then ultimately the last step that comes is the commercialization so this is how i think a complete uh, market fit problem you know product can be developed so uh, it it needs lots of uh, uh, discussion lots of strategies uh, uh, lots of efforts as well but i think if you plan it well so it is not uh, very uh, difficult to uh, develop a product which is going to have some sort of uh, ipr or uh, the, the capability to be successful in the commercial market so i think uh, uh, this is what i wanted to tell you and uh, now i think we can have the discussion on the topic so i request all the participants if have any question then write in the chat box or in question answer box we have one or two minute for the question answer session so if you have any question then you can write in the chat box dr raghavend i think you can also allow them to have uh, direct discussion as well if somebody was is interested sure sir Uh, let them raise their hands. I think 
let me see in the chat box audio audio Yeah, people can also uh, write in the chat box. I'm seeing the chat chat box. Yes, sir. I hope uh, there were uh, power failure two times in between, but uh, uh, the, uh, very, 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 it was smooth. I feel there was no interruption in between. No interruption, sir. Yeah. Session is continue going on. There is no issue. Yeah. So, sir, there is no question, as I think, in the chat box or in question answer box. So, sir, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for this session. On the behalf of IIC Global Institute of Technology, I would like to thank our resource person, Dr. Y.P. Verma, for their mind-blowing session. This session will be eye-opener for all the participants. I assure you, sir, that this session will be helpful to understand about tools that tran uh, translates a problem into a solution taking into account customer behavior and the context around it. So with this session, participants will also be able to take important information into consideration at an earlier stage and look at problem solving in depth. Also, participants will be motivated by initiative taken by UIT in your guidance. And thanks again for giving us valuable time for this session. I am also thankful to Mentor Institute Coordinator Dr. Aparna Mahajan, Director Maharaja Agrasen University Institute of Technology for playing vital role in organizing this session for students and faculty members of Global Institute of Technology. Very special thanks to all precious student and faculty participants to make this session meaningful. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks to all. Thank, thank you, Dr. Yes. Raghavendra, for this uh, opportunity. I think I always... Uh, love to have interaction with the students uh, i don't know whether they were able to take up this uh, complete design procedures uh, uh, at this stage but i really feel that uh, uh, these uh, uh, you know steps are very very important when it comes to designing right. a final product so i think as teachers as mentors we need to take care of that and at the university level or institutional level where we have these iic or the incubation labs we need to consider uh, these few of the steps out of them so that is really good to help in coming up uh, as a complete product, yes. a viable product in the market. I think yes. there are two, uh, Madam Parana or maybe Madam Garima, they have raised their hand. Uh, so can you allow them to speak, I think? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute, sir. Aparna, ma'am.
So thank you again, sir. We have not uh, facility to join the another participant in this session, but uh, they can write their question in chat box. So okay, thank okay. you very much again, sir, for this uh, special session for our students. The uh, students definitely will be motivated by uh, the initiative taken by you at the UIT. So, sir, thank you very much, sir, again. And I'm ending this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye.